You have a backup experiment. If you're seeing through this hole, through the next hole, and seeing the light at the backboard, or at 17 feet off the water, the earth is flat. If he's holding it up at 23 feet high and we're seeing the light, well, that's because the earth's curved. So I, I should only be able to see it when it's at 17 feet. OK, go ahead and drive down there, Enrique. You're going to hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his. Um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light up, way above your head. Interesting. Recently, we carried out an experiment to test the rotation to the Earth. If the Earth is spinning at one rotation every 24 hours, that means that every hour it has to turn 15 degrees. And if the gyroscope is mounted anywhere on Earth, it's going to drift. In today's 21st century navigation systems, they're using what's called a ring laser gyroscope. It is extremely precise. If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift, a 15 degree per hour drift. Now, <laughs> obviously we were taken aback by that. Wow. That's kind of a, a problem, <laughs> right? We obviously were not willing to accept that, and so we started looking for ways to disprove that it was actually registering the motion of the Earth and that it, in fact, was registering the motion of the sky. So the next thing that we set out to do was to encase the fiber optic gyro in what's called a zero Gauss chamber to see if we could actually shield the energies being generated by the heaven. And we were unsuccessful with that, unfortunately. The Flat Earthers already disproved themselves with the laser tests in that documentary like a year ago. So why is anyone still debating this? Okay, I'm assuming you mean Behind the Curve, the Netflix documentary. The whole thing was a hit piece in order to make Flat Earth look ridiculous. Um, I know that there was a laser test that was inconclusive. Just because something is inconclusive, a test is inconclusive, it's not proof either way, it's inconclusive. So, what about flat Mars? Are all planets flat, stars, or is only the Earth flat? The misconception here is that we still exist in this solar system with all these other spheres. You can't go to land on Mars, you can't land on the moon, you, these are not uh, spherical rocks just sitting in a vacuum. Um, they, are, they are the lights in the sky as, as stars are. So is Mars flat? Well, it's not a physical object as far as we can determine. What kind of evidence would convince a flat earther? They keep asking for it, but deny it every time it, if it proves them wrong. I don't think that's true. I've seen no evidence to say, okay, yeah, the, the curvature exists. I would love to be shut up. I would love for, you know, e e any, uh, agency to allow an independent investigation of those lands and then say it, the whole thing you know it turned out oh you know it was complete it was complete a lie flat earth is a lie they're all just crazy people i'd love to see that proof okay this is the boat base target it's horizontal stripes mm -hmm. we're going to launch a small boat out into the water here with a striped target and as it gets farther and farther out you'll start to lose the stripes. And what's really interesting is that uh, some of the flat earthers, including Mark Sargent, are actually going to be here for this test. The test, it's starting right now. At first, all the stripes are clearly visible. But sure enough, as the boat reaches the horizon, the stripes begin to disappear one by one. We've lost about one and a half stripes. Right, so this can only happen, why? Because of the curvature of the Earth. So here's what we are shooting. But Mark Sargent and the other flat earthers have a very different interpretation of the results. So you don't think that what we're seeing is actually real? You think it's because of yeah. heat? Oh, absolutely heat. Mark looks away and up, shaking his head no, incongruent with his words. This indicates that he likely doesn't truly believe what he just said. Does anyone here on flat earth believe it's a globe? It's still flat. No, it's anyone, a, raise a, a hand. It's not a pair either. Mark, do you really believe this stuff? Tell me the truth. I'm serious. I, I, Mark was coming across as so deceptive that even the interviewer picked up on it. 
watch again. See if you can pick it out for yourself and then I'll point it out for you. That doesn't change anything oh, for you. Lord, no. Mark, do you really believe this stuff? Tell me the truth. I'm serious. I, I, when she asks Mark that, he bursts out in a duping smile and submissively looks down bashfully for feeling like she just caught him, while he's also using that looking down to conceal his smile. So why is Mark seemingly pretending to be a flat earther? Probably fame, fortune, getting ignorant people to believe something for his own personal gain by triggering their emotions. So this is for me where I think it gets really dangerous because we're going back into the dark ages, right? You're essentially perpetuating ignorance by denying science. You know, there's a real life implication in all of this. Science has had its chance and they aren't putting up a defense. Have you ever confronted someone who you knew was lying and they started to accuse you of what you just accused them of? Mark is doing that. The scientific community just set up this whole scientific experiment, invited Mark and other flat earthers to see it for themselves. They prove the earth is round. And yet Mark is saying science is isn't putting up a defense? Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Danley. I'm an astronomer. I worked for the NASA Hubble Space Telescope Project for 10 years. And for the last 14 years, I've been the curator of Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. Well, first of all, let me start with the fact that you could never get that view, let alone the fact that the Earth is the wrong shape. There is no way you could ever get such a view where the sun is smaller than the Earth. The sun is over 100 times the diameter of the Earth. You could fit a million Earths inside the sun, not to mention the fact that it's so hot, uh, you couldn't have it so close by, we'd all be fried. One question nobody seemed to pose and no oh, okay. one ever again seemed to doubt was the shape of our world. I think that question's been posed pretty much since the beginning of, uh, of human thought. <laughs> For starters, if that disk is flat, the sun is illuminating it everywhere on the disk. So even if it's all the way on the far side of the disk, you still see the sun. So the sun would never set. The other thing that's a problem with this is that how you get a lunar eclipse, the sun and moon are on opposite sides of the earth. Oh, the NASA doesn't hide the model. true shape of the earth. During their early fakes, they showed pictures of the spheroid Earth and are now stuck with it. <laughs> they had bad idea for their fakes early on by making it a globe, and now they're stuck with it. Immense sums of money that are invested by governments and corporations in supposed space programs are used, to a large extent, to pay off the officials and many people who know about the true shape of the Earth, as well as so-called educators on TV. Hey, wait, now that's getting personal. So all of that money didn't go to building rockets. It went to paying off people. It has oh, it's also only 32, 32 miles across. And, is located approximately and this 3, is also 3,000 miles, miles the surface us. of okay, the Okay, is that hot? Do they have a temperature? The sun's area of light is similar to the spotlight oh, of a searchlight. Like Searchlight. This means that only certain portions of the Earth are illuminated at a time. But as it moves around, I mean, it would look like a circle overhead, but as it moved over there, it would start to look like an oval. I mean, you can frankly take a plate and change how it looks. NASA were developed for the sole purpose of lying to us. Their only purpose is to perpetuate the globe lie. Every single story that is told by NASA has the subcontext that we live on a globe way they're faking things is with top of the line absolutely cutting edge studio techniques like were used in the film Gravity. So they're using trapeze, they're on high wires, in order to fake us for as long as humanly possible. One of the highlights of my career, actually, was interviewing Major Tim Peake up in space on the International Space Station. Right. Now, he brought in his beautiful book, you see the curvature of the Earth, you very clearly see that, that it's, a, it's a circle. So are you telling me that this interview with him I'm talking to somebody that's just made that up or wasn't actually there. Or yeah, he, he's not. Can, can he's I not just? In outer space. He's I just not say, in outer space. Can I just? Where is he then? <laughs> um, in a Hollywood studio type. Not necessarily Hollywood. Maybe studio, here. But... Maybe where we are now. <laughs> all the astronauts, they're all military guys. If you look at them, they're all military. They're, no, they're not, not scientists. No, they're not. No, they're not. 230 individuals from 18 different countries have visited the space station. They were not all military. Are all 230 people liars? Can we just end this debate by saying... No way we, can we... <laughs> <laughs> I was very, very lucky around, yeah. and I went on Concorde. Okay. So I was very lucky I went on Concorde. So that's 60,000 feet. You could, you could clearly see the curvature of the Earth the shape of the windows? Actually, say it was the shape of the window. No, no, no yes. I said no. I didn't say that. I said what 
was the shape of the windows, is what I said. Like an oval? Scientists... I'm the best hope to prove to Flat Earth. Mad Mike spoke to CBS Sunday Morning in 2018, just a few months after the successful launch of his first steam-powered rocket, built from spare parts in his garage. Easy, guys, easy. He walked away and vowed to fly again. I expect to see uh, a flat disk up there. I don't have an agenda. If it's around, around Earth or a ball, I'm going to come down and say, hey, guys, I'm bad. It's a ball. 64-year-old Mad Mike Hughes was known as a homemade astronaut on a self-financed mission to space. But as Mola Lange reports, he died living out his dream. Moments after launching, a homemade rocket crashed into the open desert in California Saturday. On board, Mike Hughes. It would be the final act of the self-styled daredevil known as Mad Mike. His mission was to fly to the edge of outer space to ultimately see whether the Earth is flat.